Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of News Dose, where I give you some of the latest news in gaming. And well, as you may know, there seems to be like a bajillion games releasing this September, but if you don't have something to play at this moment, Xbox Game Pass just announced some new games that will be releasing on their service this month. Pretty good games as well on top of that. We also have plenty of other things to talk about, including an exciting development on one of Xbox's new studios, and an old Xbox 360 exclusive may be making a return on modern consoles. But let's talk about Xbox Game Pass for just a moment. Yes, they just announced more games for September, which is Jump Force, Dirt Rally 2.0, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, LEGO Worlds, and Bad North. I mean, seriously, how is Xbox Game Pass this good? Not only do we get Gears 5 this month, which is possibly a Game of the Year candidate, and probably is my Game of the Year, but we're also getting games like Bloodstained, Jump Force, and Dirt Rally 2.0. The thing is, not only are these good games, but they're not even that old. Bloodstained came out just a few months ago, and I actually believe that one came out in June. And I did a review for that game, so go check that out if you're interested in it. But it really is an excellent game if you like Metroidvania games, so I'd highly recommend it. It is a little on the pricier side of things too, standing at I believe $40, so Xbox Game Pass just keeps delivering and saving you more and more money. Then you have Jump Force and Dirt Rally, which are both some of the better games in their respective genres. Honestly though, Xbox Game Pass is running circles around the competition in terms of their subscription services, and now that Gears 5 is out and Daniel Ahmad is saying it is a mega hit for Game Pass, I'm very interested to know in how many people actually are subscribed to Xbox Game Pass. The truth is, we probably won't be hearing any concrete numbers anytime soon, but I think by this point, if you own an Xbox, then Xbox Game Pass is a must-have. It just seems like month after month they continue to produce high quality content, and once their newly acquired first party studios start churning out games as well, it's only going to get better from here. Now speaking of Xbox, I did note that there has been an exciting development with one of Xbox's new first party studios, and it's actually the initiative which Microsoft is building from the ground up. Apparently they posted to LinkedIn that they are looking to hire for 16 different positions, which would bring their total up to 50 employees. Now, Xbox has been hiring for almost all of their studios in masses over the last year and a half, but the reason this one is so interesting is because it appears the initiative may be gearing up for full development right now. Some of these positions include a senior writer, gameplay animator, and several different artist positions, which could signify that they have a vision for whatever their game is going to be. Of course, we don't actually know what they're working on just yet, though I know people like to think it's Perfect Dark, and maybe it is, I mean, I know that's been a rumor for quite a while now, but from the positions that they have hired so far, they seem to be getting a lot of really talented developers. I believe they have got some from the Sony Santa Monica team that worked on God of War, Naughty Dog, and several other big AAA developers, and of course the studio head is Daryl Gallagher, which has worked on Tomb Raider. I mean, with the talent that they're getting, I'd certainly expect whatever they're working on to be great, so something to keep an eye out for. In other news, a new trailer for Tamarin came out today, and I feel like a lot of people haven't actually heard of this game yet, or maybe they're sleeping on it a bit. I pre-ordered it back when they originally announced it, but it is being made by X-Rare developers, and it's a bit of a spiritual successor to the Nintendo 64 classic, Jet Force Gemini. In fact, it looks like they straight up ripped the Jet Force Gemini enemies off, but hey, I'm not upset about this at all. I'm actually very excited for this one, and come on, look how cute it is. For the moment, it is just a PC and PlayStation 4 game, but it does appear like it might come to the Nintendo Switch and Xbox One at some point down the line. Now we've also got to hear a little bit about Beyond Good and Evil 2, and I mean this game seems like it's been in development forever. I mean really, I think I've been hearing about this game for about a decade by this point, but during an interview, CEO of Ubisoft, Montpierre, and sorry if I mispronounced that, but he did say that Beyond Good and Evil 2 will have a major impact on video games. I found this to be a bit interesting, and well this could be construed as a marketing pitch from the CEO, but that is certainly a lot of pressure on the developers. It kind of reminds me of what Peter Molyneux used to do with the Fable franchise, and how he would just casually say stuff like this during interviews, and then the developers had to make it happen. With that said, Ubisoft Montpierre is actually a very talented developer, so who knows, maybe they will have a major impact on video games with this game. I know there are some pretty big fans of the original Beyond Good and Evil, so being this ambitious certainly isn't a bad thing by any means. 
Now the last thing I wanted to talk about is Alan Wake, and it seems like I've been talking about this franchise a lot recently, but according to a rumor posted by YouTuber Dr81, Virtuous and Remedy may be teaming up to do a remaster of Alan Wake for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. From my understanding, Dr. 81 does have a pretty good track record with this type of stuff, but this would certainly be great news for Alan Wake fans. We know Remedy just bought the IP off of Microsoft recently, and it appears they're going to be doing some Alan Wake DLC in their latest game, Control, but if we also get an Alan Wake remaster, I mean, surely this is all setting up an Alan Wake sequel, I would assume. I can only hope so because it just can't end on that cliffhanger. I mean, this was a really good game back on the Xbox 360. I still think it's a good game today, and I really do believe that we deserve a sequel, so the more people that plays it, the better it is. Anyways, that's it for this video, but let me know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that bell notification and subscribe button. Peace out.